Namaste. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen and children. Uh, I am Uma Inesivam, and on behalf of the Association of Performing Arts of India, I'm extremely delighted to welcome you all for an evening of mesmerizing dance program by two very talented artists. Um, we appreciate you all taking the time from your busy schedule to support APAI. And this is our 50th public concert um, in our 17-year history. And uh, we have also provided uh, more than 200 outreach programs um, in the tri-county area, like the, in the county schools, uh, libraries, museum, and colleges. Broward County is celebrating its um, centennial beginning October 2014 to October 2015 with a Broward 100, and we are very proud to be part of this celebration. Funding for tonight's event is provided in part by the Broward County Board of County Commissions, Commissioners as recommended by the Broward Cultural Council. Our special thanks to Jim Shermer for his guidance over all these years. Uh, we thank Rod Hagwood of Sun Sentinel for covering our concert in SouthFlorida.com and as well as the Friday Sun Sentinel. A special thanks to Steve Rodberg for providing sound and light. A uh, very special thanks to um, Ashok uh, Mendegre and Krishan Ramcharitar for transporting the artists from the airport and of course Vijay Lakshmi Ranganathan for designing the postcard. We are grateful to our guests Mrs. Edith um, Gooden Thompson of Broward Cultural Council and Professor Clarence Brooks, Associate Professor and Director of Dance at FAU, Florida Atlantic University, for honoring tonight's show by their presence. Um, we want to especially uh, mention and thank all, the, all our 2015 donors. Um, they, they'll be like Dr. Richard Applebaum, Dr. Manohar and Mohini Tavle, uh, Mr. Kashyap and Meena Bakhai, Mrs. Elizabeth Camp, Dr. Dinabandhu and Bharti Chokshi, Mr. Arnold Cohen, uh, Ms. Karen Duwalia, um, Dr. Altar and Sarla Ganju, uh, Mr. Wilbur and Hansa May, Dr. Naresh and Hina Patak, uh, Mr. Anthony Serban, uh, Dr. Gokil and Priyanka Shanbag, um, Dr. Haruvu and Geeta Seishatri, Mr. Daljeet and Puneet Singh, um, Dr. Surendra and Poonam Sarpal, Dr. Harish and Madhuri Thakur, and Mr. Um, Kano and Neeru Thakur, Mr. Bobby and Neha Wani, Dr. Anil and Sne Verma, Mr. Subhara and Sunanda Unawa. I want to thank all the volunteers and the API board and committee members for their selfless service. Last but not the least, um, we thank you, the audience, for your continuous support. Uh, we also urge you all to continue um, your support by giving your tax deductible um, donations so we can bring um, much more um, quality programs to Broward County. Our next uh, concert will be um, on March 7th, 2015. Uh, we are bringing Ostar uh, Shad Parvas Khan for the Sitar concert at the same venue, Broward County Main Library Auditorium, so please do mark your calendar. Um, please make a note that we no longer will send any information about our concerts in the mail. So kindly give us your email address and you can go to our website and fill out the form or you can fill out the form um, here outside um, before you leave today. And flash photography and video recording is strictly pro prohibited except um, by our staff. Uh, kindly switch off your cell phones as a courtesy um, to the performing artists. And there will be no intermission today. So the first half of the program will be uh, the Odyssey dance performance. And the second half will be the Bharatanatyam dance performance. Um, now I would like to request uh, Mrs. Uh, Poonam Sarpal to the podium to introduce the artists. Um, thank you and enjoy the evening. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome once again to tonight's performance. Uh, it gives me great pleasure to introduce our first performer, Srinwanti Chakravarti. Even in her childhood, Srinwanti had a penchant for dancing, and she was inducted into the Odissi dance form at the tender age of five. 
Srinwanti acquired a high level of expertise in her teens and has been pursuing the gharana of Guru Kelu Charan Mohapatra for many years. Srinwanti, the prodigy, is also a postgraduate in sociology. She finds life in the rhythm of Orissi and has dedicated herself to the arduous practice of this classical genre. She's proved her excellence and earned a reputation as a dance performer, innovative choreographer, and dance educator, both in India and abroad. Presently, she's pursuing dance movement therapy to extend dance for therapeutic services. She's also shown her mettle in research work in the paper which she's written called Hindu Temple Women, Devadasi, the Divine Prostitution. Srinwanti is the founder and artistic director of the Institute Srijati, a center for art and culture. Her remarkable devotion and dedication to Urisi is evident in the number of prestigious performances she's given all over India and overseas in countries such as the United States of America, Canada, England, Italy, France, Romania, Switzerland, and Belgium. Currently, she's pursuing some research work and experimental choreographies. She gives regular dance classes, conducts workshops, and demonstrates throughout France and Europe. She even conducts online video classes. Please give a warm Florida welcome to Sri Vanti Chakravarti. Thank you. Namaskar. Hello, everyone. Myself, Srinwanti, and on behalf of Association of Performing Arts of India, a hearty welcome to all of you. Today, we are going to take you to a journey through Indian classical dances. India has many classical dance form, but we present today Odissi and Bharatanatyam. I'm going to present Odissi. Odissi is a classical dance form from eastern part of India, originated from Orissa. It's a temple dance form and is very unique for the fluidity, grace, and a position called Tribhangi. Just to introduce the individual pieces I'm going to perform today, I'm going to start with a piece called Durga. But before I explain, I have to start with Namaskar, the salutation, because uh, I'm going to stamp on Mother Earth, and I'm just going to say that I'm sorry I'm going to stamp on you and show my respect. So Namaskar. My first piece, Durga. It's an invocatory piece about the Hindu goddess Durga. Once uh, in the mythology, there was a great demon Mahishashura, very powerful, and no one could defeat. But all the other gods gave Durga, the goddess, the female power, different weapons, and Durga could actually kill Mahishashura, the demon. Durga, very graceful. Her hair, it's long and tied up with moon. She's adorned by Atasi, the white flower. She has heavy breasts and she sits in a tribhangi position. She has 10 hands and in each she has the weapon. 
ഖർഗ ത്രിശൂല ചക്ര ആൻഡ് മെനി മോർ ആൻഡ് ഫൈനലി വിത്ത് ദ ബാറ്റിൽ വിത്ത് ദ ഡീമൺ ഷി കിൽസ് മഹിഷാസുര ഐ വോണ്ട് ടു ഷോ മൈ റെസ്പെക്ട് മൈ ഹോമേജ് ആൻഡ് ഡെഡിക്കേഷൻ ടു ദ ഗോഡ് ഇസ് ദുർഗ ആൻഡ് വി സ്റ്റാർട്ട് വിത്ത് ദാറ്റ് പീസ് ടു ഡൈ താങ്ക് യു വെരി മച്ച്
Jayanti Mangala Kali Patra Kali is an Abhinaya, a storytelling dance through hand gestures, through the facial expressions, my eye movements, and more, my bhava, my emotions. Um, just try to explain a bit of the story. It's an Oriya. The text is an Oriya, and uh, it has been written by a poet called Banamali Das. Oh, Krishna, you are a baby boy, but you really know the tricks. Because though you are just a child, you are the god. What a wonder. And it has certain episodes from Krishna's childhood. The first one. Krishna's mother, Yashoda, is trying to breastfeed Krishna, the baby Krishna. But Krishna is not interested. He's crying, crying, crying. And the mother, can anyone help me, please? Can you breastfeed? Krishna is not having my milk. Demon Putana. Disguised as a woman, oh, give me your baby. I'm going to breastfeed, but her intentions are not nice. She wants to give poisonous milk. And she tries, you know, she's trying to breastfeed. But Krishna is the god, he's baby, but he kills demon Putana. The second, Krishna has no fear. He's, you know, like very happy and all, but though he's a child, he's so powerful. He kills the demon Shakata, Dhanuka, and the big eagle Bakrashura demon. Then once it goes like it, the third one, uh, Indra, the Lord Indra, was very angry with the villagers of Krishna, and because he was the lord of rains, he showered, you know, like heavy pour, and the whole village is flooding, flooding. Krishna says, don't you worry, I'm going to save you all. And only on the little finger, he lifts the mountain, Govardhana, gives shelter to all, and saves the villagers. The next one. <laughs> Krishna's maternal king, Kamsha, demon. He 
sense, a poisonous snake, Kaliya, to kill Krishna. And he was, uh, the snake was actually residing in the river Yamuna and has poisoned the water. So any little animals who was trying to drink water was dying off. The villagers who wanted to wash in the river died off. Who drank, died off. Nobody knew what's going on. One day, Krishna was playing ball with his friends and the ball went off to river Yamuna. Everybody said, Krishna, don't go. There is a snack, you know, like it's dangerous. Krishna is fearless. Oh, don't you worry. I'm going to get the ball. He dies and fights with the snake Kalia and dances on the foot of the snake. The last one, Krishna's mom Yashoda made makhan, buttermilk, because Krishna used to love a lot the buttermilk. But naughty Krishna is uh, curious, you know, and uh, he eats mud. And he's so happy, he eats, okay, mud is tasty, so I'm gonna have a bit more like that. When Yashoda, after a hard walk of the day, where is Krishna, where is Krishna, Krishna, where are you? Ah, there you are. Ah, you're eating mud? I made makhan for you and you're eating mud? You have become naughty and I'm really going to hit you. She gets a stick and, oh Krishna, I'm going to really give you a lesson. You are naughty, throw the mud, throw the mud. She insists. Krishna, Mama, please, don't, don't, it's hurting me, please stop, please stop. And when the mother insists, no, throw the mud, he opens. He opens the mouth. And what does Yashoda see? The whole world, the universe rotating in Krishna's mouth instead of mud, the Vishwarupa. The mother takes, oh Krishna, you are my little boy, but you are a wonder. You are the Lord of the universe. So, I'm going to present Kere Chondo. Oh dear Krishna, you are little, you are the son of King Nanda, but you really know tricks. Thank you.
The last two pieces which I just presented was choreographed by my guru, Guru Keluchan Mahapatra. The one I'm going to present is a composition of mine. It's, uh, I call it Barsat, the Ren. Uh, being born and brought up in India, monsoons has always been very inspiring for me. I remember I used to, uh, I am from Calcutta, but I spent ch my childhood in a small town and uh, when I had the, we had the rents, the way as a child we used to get excited to make the paper boats and sell them. And I remember in the neighborhood, our mothers didn't want us to get drenched in the rain. So they said, okay, you're not going to go out. But we used to literally wait when the mamas are going to take a small afternoon nap. And then we could just hidingly go out and sell our paper boats and enjoy being drenched in rain. Uh, it was very interesting. I mean, I kind of enjoyed it that from my childhood to girlhood to my womanhood, rain was always there to inspire me. Uh, it also inspires when the first drop comes on Mother Earth, the smell of the earth, and how being a woman, I felt to be united, to be loved, to get uh, excited, to dress up because I'm happy. I want to be with my love. So these are all emotions which I had, but when I kind of shared with my friends and family, I realized they also probably had similar kind of emotions, the connection with rain. This piece uh, is my interpretation how Barsat, rain, inspired me to dance and explore. So a small journey to the monsoons with me. Thank you.
Thank you all for being here with us. Thank you, Bharati ji, for giving me an opportunity to present here my art form. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Wasn't that the most lyrical, beautiful Odissi dance performance you have seen? We truly are privileged to be able to enjoy an evening of such caliber. So, Bharati Chokshi, wherever you are, Hats off, thank you. Our next performer, Sahana Balasubramanya, is one of the most promising young artists in the field of Bharatnatyam today. She's trained in Delhi under the renowned Guru Saroja Vedyanathan for 14 years in the Tanjavur style of Bharatnatyam. Sahana has performed extensively as a solo performer and received critical acclaim for the same. She's also a member of her guru's troupe and has danced at prestigious venues across the globe, having participated in her guru's productions in major roles. Sahana was selected to be the lead dancer for the Bharatnatyam segment in the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games held in New Delhi in 2010. 
Sahana has conducted dance workshops both in India and overseas. She's also been a senior dance faculty member at Ganesha Natyale and taught there for seven years. A recipient of the Sahitya Kala Parishad Scholarship, Sahana is currently pursuing her PhD in mathematics at Vanderbilt University, where she's also the instructor in Bharatnatyam at the Vanderbilt Dance Program. She has a master's and honors degree in mathematics from Lady Sri Ram College, Delhi University, and has been awarded the Anapurma Dua Scholarship for Academic Excellence at the undergraduate level and the University Endowment Scholarship for her master's. With laudable dedication, Sahana continues to perform regularly and to impart training to her students. Please give a resounding welcome to Sahana Balasubramanya. Namaskar. Salutations to my Guru, Guru Bhyo Namaha. Bharatanatyam is a traditional classical Indian dance form that originated in the temples of South India nearly 3,000 years ago. And the style of Bharatanatyam that I am presenting this evening, the Tanjaur school of Bharatanatyam, is named so because it derives its inspiration from the sculptures of Lord Shiva that have been inscribed on the temple walls of the Brihadishwara temple in Tanjaur in Tamil Nadu. The very word Bharatanatyam is a culmination of the words bhava or expression, raga, melody, tala, rhythm, and natyam, which means to dance. I begin this evening with the Ardha Narishwara Ashtakam, eight verses that have been written by the great sage Sri Adi Shankaracharya in praise of the Ardha Narishwara, which as the name suggests, is half man and half woman. For in fact, this deity is the combined form of Lord Shiva and his consort Parvati. Lord Shiva constitutes the right half of the Ardhanarishvara, and he is the very symbol of masculinity. Whereas Parvati, who constitutes the left half of the Ardhanarishvara, is full of grace and femininity. She is soft like the Champaya flower, whereas Lord Shiva is harsh like camphor. She adorns herself with a garland of flowers gem studded earrings, delicate anklets. But Lord Shiva adorns himself with snakes, the moon on his forehead, and the tiger's skin attire. She dances the lasya with grace, wearing the vermilion kunkuma in the middle of her forehead, and Shiva dances the tandava with energy smearing himself with the holy ash, the bhasma. Despite their stark contrasts, both Shiva and Parvati admit to being incomplete without each other. But their union is not merely symbolic of their immense love for each other. Parvati is the universal mother. From her, all of Shrishti emerges, whereas Shiva is the destroyer. He is said to be capable of destroying the world when he dances in anger. And thus their union is symbolic of the continuous process of creation and destruction, both of which are essential for the sustenance and propagation of life in a smooth manner. To me, on a personal level, this piece also represents gender equality which is amazing because this piece was written several hundred years ago. The Ardha Narishwara Ashtakam is set in Ragam Megh and Adi Talam, which is a cycle of eight beats.
I now present a Rama Bhajan. Lord Rama is the hero of the Indian epic, the Ramayana. And during the course of the events of this great epic, Lord Rama performs many miraculous feats, sometimes with but a single touch of his feet. And it is his feet which earned the devotion of many people during the Ramayana. When he took the form of the Vamana avatar, claimed the earth with one gigantic step and the skies with the next, in doing so, he punched a hole in the skies above causing the Ganges to be released from the heavens from whence she flowed down to the earth after being captured by Lord Shiva in his tresses. It is his divine feet which his brother Bharata worshipped with such fervor that rather than be king, he instead chose to take his brother's slippers placed them on the throne of Ayodhya and ruled in his name for the 14 years that Lord Rama was exiled. The poor man Guha, whose job was to ferry ordinary people across the river, was given the fortune of being able to serve the Lord by washing his feet and carrying him across the river, proving that all boundaries that exist within society, such as those of caste, can indeed be broken. When Sage Gautama's wife, Ahalya, was suspected of infidelity with Lord Indra and cursed into stone by her husband, Lord Rama realized her innocence and released her from a curse by simply touching her with his feet and returning her to her beautiful form. Tulsi Dasa, the composer of this bhajan, this devotional piece, claims that whoever worships Lord Rama's feet will find eternal happiness and ultimately bliss when they merge with the Lord. Such is the power of Lord Rama's divine feet. Tulsi Das bhajan, Bhajamana Rama Charana Sukhadai is in Ragam Sindhu Bhairavi and set to Adi Talam.
सदा रहत सुखदाई सोई चरण संतन जन सेवत सदा रहत सुखदाई सोई चरण गौतम ऋषि नारी परस परम पद पाई सोई चरण गौतम ऋषि नारी परस परम पद पाई सोई चरण गौतम ऋषि नारी परस परम पद पाई सोई चरण गौतम ऋषि नारी परस परम पद पाई परस परम बज मर राम चरण सुखदाय बज मन राम चरण सुखदाय बज मन राम चरण सुख शिव सन कादिक आरु ब्रह्मादिक शेष सहस मुख गाई शेष सहस मुख गाई श्री राम राम शेष सहस मुख गाई तुलसीदास मारुत सुत की प्रभु तुलसीदास मारुत सुत की प्रभु निज मुख करत बढ़ाए निज मुख करत बढ़ाए बज मन राम चरण सुख दाए बज मन राम चरण सुख दाए बज मन राम चरण सुख दाए राम चरण सुखदाई बज मन राम चरण सुखदाई बज मन राम चरण सुखदाई This is also a composition of the great sage Sri Adi Shankaracharya, written in praise of the river Ganges or Ganga. Exploring her dual nature in Hindu mythology, that as a river and personified as a woman, a goddess. Originally a river in heaven, the Ganga was mighty and proud. So proud, in fact, that when King Bhagiratha prayed that she be sent down to the earth to wash away the ashes of his ancestors and provide them with moksha, she threatened to fall with such force that the earth would be eroded away. It was Lord Shiva who captured her in his matted tresses, breaking her fall and her pride, and then gently released her onto the earth. Once here, she followed in the tracks of King Bhagiratha's chariot as he led her across the plains of India to the ashes of his ancestors and then finally helped her merge into the sea. Till date, the waters of the Ganges are considered sacred and are said to wash away the sins of any man who takes a dip in her holy waters. She is the passageway to heaven, keeping her devotees away from the fiery depths of hell. Considered to be the sickness, sorry, considered to be the alleviator of sickness and of sorrow, she is also the mother to King Bhishma and is considered to be the daughter of the sages herself. 
flowing beautifully from the Himalayan mountains, she adorns this earth like a garland around a woman's neck. The beloved of Lord Shiva, it is her duty to grant salvation to mankind. And Adi Shankaracharya prays to her in the hope that should he be reborn, then he should be reborn as a fish or a turtle living near her, rather than be a rich king living away from her. For to have even a simple home along her banks is equivalent to a home in Vaikuntha or paradise. The Ganga, the silent witness to mankind and its various civilizations that have flourished along her banks for centuries. And she flows on, ever spirited, ever lively, performing her duty of granting moksha to all of us, reminding all of us in turn to perform our duty in every life. The jatis in this piece depict Ganga's capture in Shiva's matted hair, the Ganga following Bhagiratha's chariot, as well as her finally achieving a sense of balance with Lord Shiva. The jatis have been composed by my guru, Guru Saroja Vaidyanathan, and the composition is set in Ragamalika and Adi Talam, the Ganga Stotram, Jaya Jaya Gange.
शोक तापम पापम हर मे भगवती कुमति कलापम त्रिभुवन सारे वसुदारे तम सिगते मम अनु संसारे अलकानंद परमानंदे गुरु करुणामयी कातर वंदे तव तट निकटे यस्य निवास खलु वैकुंठे तस्य निवास वरमिह नीरे कमतो मीना किंवा तीरे शरद शीना अथवा स्वपचो मदिनो दीन स्तव नहीं दूरे नृपति कुलीन ओ भुवनेश्वरी पुण्ये धन्य देवी द्रवमयी मुनिवर कन्ये गंगा स्तव मिम कमल नि नोय सजयति सत्यम शंकर सेवक शंकर रचित पठती सुखी स्तव इति समाप्त जय जय गंगे जय गर What a performance! Don't you all agree with me? Let's give a big hand to Sahana. Okay, she's going to do the mangalam and then. Um, traditionally, we conclude a Bharatanatyam recital with a short mangalam. In its stead, this evening I present the national song of India, verses written by Sri Bankim Chandra Chatterjee in praise of my motherland. the text of which translates as follows i bow to thee o mother richly watered blessed with a variety of fruits cooled by the winds from the mountain your landscape is dark with a harvest of various crops and though a multitude of languages exist within your boundaries all of them are like nectar equally sweet to hear you who greets everyone with a smile blessed by the morning rays of the sun himself o giver of happiness the granter of wishes it is to you i offer my final salutations set in ragam desh and adi talam vande mataram
Well, all good things have to come to an end. And um, we would like to thank um, both the artists uh, we, uh, with a little token of appreciation. And uh, I'm sure you all will agree with me with what a talented artist the two lovely ladies are and what a magnificent performance they gave with all their details and um, mythological story you know, depicted in each one of the pieces they did. Um, and the creativity definitely showed. Uh, we really would like to also, um, you know, show a little token of appreciation. Um, and I would like to um, call um, Sahana Balasubramanian and Srinwanti Chakrabarti to the stage, please. <laughs> Malini. Let's give a big hand to uh, Bharti Chokshi, without which, without her dedication, this program is not possible. Thank you, Dr. Chokshi and Bharti Chokshi for this lovely performance. Thank you all.